Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, welcome back to our scripting series on YouTube. In our last scripting tutorial, we created a fairly useful lerping script. And now for this scripting tutorial, we are going to create a slurping script. Now, the slurping function or slurp function within Unity 3D will spherically interpolate an object between two specified vectors. Slurping is not used quite as often as lerping is in my experience, but it is still really useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script. So I'm going to go to my scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script. And we're just going to call this slurper. Okay, now let's go out to our IDE and let's open up the slurper script. And now that we've got this open, let's get to work. Okay, now for our slurper script, we're going to need a lot of different variables at the beginning. So we're going to need a public transform start pause for start position, a public transform end pause for end position. We're going to need a public float journey time and we can set this to 1.0F. We also have a public float speed. We need a public bool repeatable. Okay, so that's gonna do it for our public variables. So, so now let's set up our private variables. So the first private variable we're gonna need is a start time. So we can say float start time. We're gonna need a center point. So we're gonna create a vector three center point we're also going to need a vector three we'll call this start relative center or just start rel center and a final vector three which will be an end rel center for our ending relevant relevant center okay so that should do it for our variables that we need we're not actually going to need the start function for this script so we can just erase that and now we're going to go inside of our update function now, the first thing we actually need to do within our update function is call a method to get our center point. We actually don't have that method created yet, so instead of filling out the update function first, we're going to create that method. And we're just going to do a public void get center, and we're going to pass in a vector3 direction. Now, what we actually want to do is set up our center point is equal to parentheses start position dot position plus our in position dot position times 0.5f. Okay, and now we're gonna need to say center point minus equals our direction. And now we need to set up our start relative center. So we're gonna say start relevant center is equal to our start position dot position minus our center end relative center is equal to end position dot position minus our center. Okay, so that's really all we need for this function. So let's go through really quickly and figure out what this is going to do. So this is getting our center point, which is the addition of our start position and our end position vectors multiplied by 0.5. Then we're updating our center point minus our direction. Finally, we're setting up our start relative center and our end relative center. Okay, so inside of our update function, like I said earlier, we're gonna call get center first, and we're just gonna call vector three dot up here. Okay, and now we need to set up an if statement, and we're just gonna say if not repeatable, and we'll just go ahead and say else. Now let's fill out our first section of this if statement. So for the first thing, the first thing we're gonna do is create a float fraction of our journey completed. So we'll just say frac complete is equal to parentheses time dot time minus our start time divided by our journey time multiplied by our speed. The next thing we need to do is update our transform dot position is equal to vector three dot slurp. And we're going to pass in our start relevant center relative center here and our in relative center and finally, our frac complete multiplied by our speed. And the last thing we're going to do is say transform.position 
plus equals center. Okay, so basically all we're doing here is we're figuring out how much of the journey we've completed so far. And then we're updating the position of our object based on that and then finally updating based on the center point as well. Now inside of our else function, we can actually copy this. Okay, so now that we've got that copied, it's really a very easy change. Basically what I'm gonna do is delete this right hand side of our equation and we're gonna say math f dot ping pong. We're gonna pass our time dot time minus our start time. Whoops, start time. And then we're also gonna pass our journey time divided by our speed, okay? And that should do it for this script. Let's go ahead and save it. We're gonna go back out to our scene here and now what we're actually going to do is click on our cube. We are going to turn off our lerper script, add our slurper script, and we're going to add these two empty game objects to our start position and our end position. And let's set up a speed of one. So let's see what happens when we press play. So when we press play, we saw that it moved very quickly across. So let's actually up the journey time Sorry about that. Let's actually up the journey time now and press play again. And now we can see that it is moving more slowly to the end point. Okay, so now that we've actually tested to see if it will move across when not repeatable, when it when repeatable is not checked. So again, let's just watch that really quickly. It's going to move across the sky and stop. Okay, so now we know that's working. But if I check repeatable now, we've got something interesting that's going to happen. So I press play here and it moves across and then it's going to wait and then it's going to go back and immediately come back across and this is occurring because it has to reach this journey time of three and so it will go and it will wait until time reaches that point and then immediately go back across so what we could do is try to set speed to three but we're still going to have a delay the delay is slightly shorter now so let's change it to four and see what that does. Again, it's moving more quickly now, but it's still not immediately slurping. So let's actually stop this. I did want to show this one quick trick here. So inside of our repeating function, we can say if frac complete is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to set our start time equal to time dot time and let's save that and go back out okay so now that we've actually got that set up let's go ahead and test it and see what this is actually going to do so i'm going to press play and basically what's going to happen is our cube's going to move across the slurp and then immediately go back to the initial position and you could do a sunrise sunset kind of thing like this to where you're you got your sun moving across and then you're instantiating your moon um, and moving it across over a specified time. Now, one thing I do want to show you here is how to get it to endlessly repeat back and forth. And this is really interesting. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the journey time to one. And now when I do that, you can see that it is immediately going to go boom, boom. And now there's no delay, right? And if I up the speed, it's going to move more quickly. And I can get it moving really fast, like super fast. So that's kind of crazy looking, but it is pretty cool, you know? So now we've basically got this slurping block that can continuously move back and forth and do all sorts of fun things like that. So let's actually stop that. And again, all I added here was if frac complete is greater than or equal to one, we're resetting our time. So very simple script here, a lot of fun. You know, this is a pretty useful script and it can be used for a lot of different things. Um, you know, playing with a lot of the different variables and how we're doing the ping ponging and things like that. You know, you don't have to use ping pong here. There's another way to get it to repeat. Let me know if you want us to cover that as well and we can certainly do that. But that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Be sure to drop us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial or this series. We're gonna continue developing along this series, just creating simple scripts, showing you guys how to do some of these more basic functionalities within Unity. And as always, thanks for watching.